This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account her normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. Last episode, we started from scratch with zero GP to our name, completed Secrets of the North and took on the Phantom Muspa. We then completed Monkey Madness 2 and reaped the benefits from demonic gorillas unlocked by the quest. And lastly, we finished Desert Treasure 2 and jumped headfirst into farming Vardorvis, where we made enough money to end at a bank worth 290 million GP. I want to start off this video by doing a really good consistent moneymaker, so we are going to be doing Vorkath. Luckily we already have Dragon Slayer 2 completed, so we do have access to the boss, but there is one thing I need to get done before we can get into the grind. And that is to collect 1250 seal to get full ranged void, as well as upgrading the two main pieces to elite. It is going to be a big grind, but since the combat achievement rework, it is actually helping out quite a lot, because if you have the hard one completed, which I do have, I will get three additional commendation points per successful pass control game, so I guess it is time to just board this boat and get it done. And that is the end of the first game, let's see how many points we're going to be getting from this. 8 Void Commendations, that is kinda wild, and also we do get some money for every single win, so it's going to be stacking up. It has actually been a very nice and chill grind, it's been going really fast, and we have 97 strength coming in, and we have already got so many seals at this point. Look at this, 8 points for that, and 1074, we only need like 200 more points and we're done. And there we are, 1,250 points, let's go ahead and buy everything. Oh no! What? What am I doing? Oh, I bought the <laughs> Void Melee helmet. I honestly thought that was the ranged one. It looks like a ranged helmet, man. It's been so long since I used Void. Uh, I guess I'll have to go back and farm some more points, but I can buy the uh, Void Ranger helmet and also upgrade one of my pieces to Elite. So let's go ahead and do that. Yep, I get the chest at least, but uh, I will have to go and get more points. And I thought might as well, I went for 400 points, 200 more than I actually needed, but now I can buy every single void piece, so I can't really mess this up. Okay, there we are, 200 commendations, and that is now also the mage helmet bot in my inventory, so we have the full set ranged right here, and also the melee helmet and the mage helmet, so never have to go back here again. There is only one last thing I need to get done before we can head over to the GE and actually buy the last items I need, and that is enchanting salive amulets, and I also need to go to the nightmare zone to imbue this right now. Luckily, I have nearly 2 million Nightmare Zone points, but we're only going to be imbuing a one of them, and you need to imbue it to be able to use it with ranged, otherwise you can only use it with melee. And the reason why this is so essential for Vorkath is because you get 20% more damage versus undeads, which Vorkath is, so it's a massive DPS increase. In the last episode, we ended up with a nearly 190 million cash tags. I decided to spend a good amount of that, actually, on some essential Vorkath upgrades, and I think we're pretty much good at this point. We still have 25 million GP as well to buy supplies with, potions and all that good stuff. And here it is. We have the finalized Vorkath setup. I won't go deep into the mechanics, but let me explain very briefly how this fight works. When Vorkath shoots a fireball like this up in the air, you have to move away from your current position. If it lands on you, you will get one shot. Secondly, when Vorkath shoots a purple flame, it will disable your prayer, so just use your quick prayers to turn them on again. And last of all, the Vorkath main abilities is the white flame. This freezes you in place and spawns a small minion. Use Crumble on Dead to one-shot this one. If it reaches you, you will take heavy damage. And lastly, Vorkath will shoot out poison over the entire arena, and at the same time rapidly attack you at your current location. When this happens, just turn on walk and just walk around, avoid all the poison, and as long as you don't stand still, you won't die. And that's it, that's the first KC done, 230, definitely can improve on that quite a lot with the setup, I think I got 228 with like a rune crossbow way back in the days, but let's have a look at the value of the first KC, 109,000 GP, and this is pretty much how every single kill is going to look unless you get one of these mega rare drops. 
Yo, already we got the Vorkath's head and a new personal best, of course, 143. I said I can improve it quite a lot. That is actually the backpack upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that right away as it's a DPS increase. Not only does the backpack give double accuracy now, it also increases my range strength by plus two, which is another max hit. And it looks really good with my gear. So that's another bonus as well. Oh, we actually got one of the new items that was kind of recently added to Vorkath, which is really primarily made for Iron Man, the Scaly Blue Dragon Hide. It's worth 414 GP, so not that good. You can use a knife on this at a bank, I think, to get 50 Dragon Scales. I guess a bit of a small advice I can give you guys if you're doing Vorkath yourself, turn on tile indicators on the Runelite plugin hub to see where you're actually located at all times with this blue square. It makes it a lot easier to know exactly when to click off to another direction when you're really close to a poison pile. I've never done this before, so let's go ahead and try it. Knife on the scaly blue dragon hide. You can only do this while in a bank. I am in a bank though, what is this? Bank chest, literally what it says man. I guess we're at a real bank now, so let's go ahead and try 50 dragon scales, all noted, and that is now worth 600 GP. So we actually gained 186 GP or something from doing that, but uh, uh, not too good of value from that new drop. No! That's 50 KC and a Vork. I actually thought that Vorkath head was something massively rare. All the things you can get here is really super rare, so I had a bit of a heart attack. Yo, we have the first elite clue scroll of the grind. These are 1 in 65 from Vorkath, so we should be seeing them fairly frequently, roughly 1 every 2.5 to 3 hours. Oh, come on, man. Why do I get this one? I would ideally love to get all the elite requirements that I don't have, but Pyromancer's Robes and Farmer's Straw Hat, both of them could take a very long time. So, unfortunately, one of the few that I will be dropping. After spending around 4 hours here at Vorkath, this is now 100 kill count on the loot tracker, and that means we're getting roughly 25 kills an hour, and this is all the loot that we got in that time. 118,000 GP average per kill, and I think a good goal for this video to go for is going to be 500 Vorkath. Oh, it looks like we have another shot at an elite clue scroll casket. Now, this is a good example of a step that I actually can't do, but I want to get done. Spirits of the Elite is a very short quest, so let's go and get it done. Less than 10 minutes later, there we go. Spirits of the Elite completed. We now have access to the prayer altar here as well. And there it is, the first casket done of the grind, and I will be keeping all of these until the end of the Vorkath grind specifically, and then we'll open them before we get into anything else. Did I just spend like 5 minutes looking at wiki how to make a sled? And I have not completed Troll Romance. I was like, there's no way I haven't done this, so why is it not working? Well, it seems like my elite clue scrolls are forcing me to progress my account. And that should be Troll Romance completed. Also a very easy quest that I cannot believe I had not completed until now. No! All of this sled making just to get the same step again, blocking me from my potential riches. It is what it is. Oh, we got something. No way. What? What is this? No way, dude. We got a jar of decay. Just so you guys know, this jar of decay is worth absolutely nothing. And you know what the best part is? It is the same drop rate as the Vorkath pet. This is now my collection log. We're like 200 and what, 80 kills in. Why do I get 1 in 3,000 jar of decay at this point, man? Oh my god. Why? Why did my character go back? I clicked on the boss and it just runs back into the fire attack. What did I miss? Things are not going great right now, man. I'm dying so much. I was actually kind of thinking about what to do with all these duplicate Vorkath heads, but I just realized I should be making a bunch of assemblers because if I want to go into the deep wilderness in the future, I can bring these instead of the bad backpacks. Because if you die with the Avos assembler above 20 wilderness, you actually lose it. So having multiple is really good. We have finally got the elite clue scroll step that requires the song The Pharaoh, which is actually unlocked from beneath Cursed Sands. So let's go ahead and get that quest done, and uh, let's talk about what that quest actually unlocks for me. Beneath Cursed Sands was always on my to-do list, as it unlocks one of the best, if not the best, moneymaker in the entire game, the Tombs of Amaskat. This is a raid I definitely am looking forward to doing on this account, but only when I have slightly higher budgets. 
Also, on completion of the quest, you do get two pretty useful items. The first item is the Circlet of Water, which acts as basically infinite water skins when charged with water runes. And lastly, we have the Karis Partisan, which is a super strong weapon against Cal fights and can be upgraded even further with the jewels from the Tombs of Amasket. And with that, let's complete the quest. Very easy first fight. Not so easy second fight, I should not have used melee here. And there we go, that's the second fight completed, only one more to go. Even if the final fight is not much of a challenge, I really love the aesthetics of it. The fires around the area, the shadow spawning, everything is really, really cool. The shadow actually kind of makes me think about Ocarina of Time and the shadow of Link. Uh, it's just really cool. And that is all she wrote. That is Beneath Coruscant completed. 50,000 agility experience to carry partisan circles of water, but most importantly, the Pharaoh soundtrack. So we can now complete that elite clue scroll, and hopefully we do not get the Pyromancer robe step again. We are definitely getting close to done with this. 490 KC, 10 more to go. And I have to say, I'm actually very happy with this grind, because I didn't expect to get anything at all, except for the common drops. And at least getting the Jar of Decay is kind of cool. It's not worth a lot, but uh, as I said, I didn't expect any rares at all, as they're just all extremely rare, so it's cool to see at least one of them. It has actually been roughly 30 hours of gameplay, including all the clue scrolls, quests, all that good stuff since I started the Vorkath grind, and we are finally done, and we get a Vorkath head for the last drop as well. We just hit 500 KC, and we are now done with the Vorkath section of this video. This is all the loot that we got. Very good money, but the supplies also did cost a bit, but not too much actually. The supplies for Warcath is not that bad. This is the end of my collection log. We have 16 Warcath heads, but let's actually have a look at how much we made from this grind in terms of bank value. And here we are with the 60.5 million loot tab, and we have the 7 elite clue skulls I haven't opened yet, which is going to add to this value as well. So let's go ahead and get them open and see what we get. Okay, so we got a master on the first one, and the issue with this is that I think there is a lot of master steps I actually can't complete, but I'm going to give it a try and see if we can complete them anyways. Okay, we have a bit of an interesting one here. I'm 73 herb lore, and I need to be 80 to be able to make the ranging mix. I can boost this by 4, so I only need 76. And I'm already pretty close to 74, so I'm kind of already deep into this master. How many steps have I done? Yeah, we're on step number 5, so I feel like it's definitely worth going for this. A lot cheaper than I thought, 76 herblore for only 2 million. I do think this could actually be the last step. We might be getting the first master of this series. Yes, there we go. You obtained the casket. I'm going to be saving this for after I open all the elites and maybe we can even complete the second master. Masters is 1 in 5 from Elite, so we should be getting one more of the Masters at least from this opening. Also, we could be getting any Mimics and there we go. Another Master. Let's see if we can get it done. Absolutely no problems at all, we got second master. Are we going to get any more masters in the last ones? It it doesn't seem like it. There we go, that's all the elites opened and this is the loot from them, so let's go ahead and open the masters. I have never got a unique from masters, so getting anything is going to be a collection og slot, so let's see what we can get from these masters. First one is 368k and the second one is 483k, not bad. Alright, so let's actually see the results of the Vorkath grind. We sold back all the expensive items I bought for the grind, and I have 61 million in pure cash after selling all the loot from the clues and the actual kills itself. So let's go ahead and collect this, put the money into the bank, and we went from 290 million to 350 million. So we actually, even with supply costs and everything, pretty much made 60 million GP from that. Before we get into the next grind, let's talk about this little green plant right here. I went ahead and bought 1000 toad flax seeds for less than 800 GP each to use for herb bronze. When these are fully grown, you can harvest them for grimy toad flax worth 3900 GP each, and you do get multiple per seed planted, making them by far the best herb seeds to plant for profit. So over the the course of this video and probably in future episodes as well, I will do my best to keep up with herb runs to slowly stack up as many herbs as possible and give you guys updates on herb count milestones as I go. I am honestly pretty terrible at keeping up with herb runs, but I saw the profit margins on these and I just had to begin this as soon as possible for passive income. 
It is now finally time to begin the next big grind of this episode. When discussing money makers, a common topic is which of these two bosses are the best for consistent money? Either Vorkath, which we just completed, or Solra, also known as the Money Snake. The main difference between these two bosses is that Solra has more unique items at a lower drop rate, making the boss, in my opinion, a bit more exciting to kill than Vorkath. So let's settle this debate right here in this episode by defeating, just like we did with Vorkath, 500 Solra to see which boss is the most profitable out of these two. We have made some very useful purchases for Solra. This is not all the items that I'll need, but all the main expensive items. I am thinking about getting an Elidness Award as well. It is not that expensive and it's a pretty good mage offhand as well, so I think I will be getting this one. And that's pretty much it. I also do have to enchant my Ring of Suffering at the Nightmare Zone, but luckily we already know I have a lot of points there. So let's go ahead and get that done. The reason why this ring is so extremely good is because you can charge this with so many rings of recoil and they are necessary when killing Solra because it spawns a bunch of small minions that has to die to recoil damage. After having a second look at the Elidness Ward, I actually sold it back, realized it's really not worth bringing. So this is my magic setup and this is my range setup, serviceable enough to actually get some decent Solra kills. I have also been notoriously lucky on this account on Solra, so let's hopefully see this luck continue and get a bunch of uniques. Let's briefly talk about the mechanics I will have to deal with during my encounter with Solra. The fight works on a rotation system with three possible paths. It's fairly complicated to explain in detail and we take so much time, so instead of doing that, just know that the color rotation of the boss is not random. The first one is green phase. During this one, protect from missiles and attack with magic. As simple as that. Second phase is blue. Protect magic and attack with ranged. A bit of a wrench in the system that happens during this phase is that it shoots out a ranged attack which is unavoidable damage. This is why I bring Vengeance to reflect some of that damage. And lastly, we have the red phase, which is where my ground markers come in. During this phase, you do not have to use any protection prayers at all, but rather you will have to avoid Solra slapping you with its tail. And it's done by simply moving a few tiles away from where you were previously stood when it's charging up the attack. Between phases, Solra also will spew out toxic clouds covering parts of the arena. If you stand in them, you will take rapid venom damage. Lastly, the boss also spawns snakelings that attack you. Now luckily they only have a one hit point, which is why the Ring of Suffering's recoil effect instantly kills them. So just kind of tank the damage and eat if needed. If you're an avid Solra enjoyer, you definitely know that I'm missing out on some mechanics here, but I think this is all you need to know to really get your first attempts in on the boss if you have no idea what's going on on the screen. Okay, I can definitely feel I am very rusty at Solra, and the first KC was not the fastest. 142, also I did think about that I might be actually buying a saturated heart as well. It is extremely expensive, it's at 100 million GP right now, but it might be worth the investment. It is such a good magic upgrade, the Saturated Heart, and I can't even imagine doing 500 solar kills without buying this. I am hoping it's not going to be dropping too much. But yeah, we got it for 100.8 million JP. And if you press on this, you get a permanent magic boost. And it lasts for 5 minutes, so it's definitely extremely useful with a trident. Maybe it's just luck, or maybe the Saturated Heart is actually doing work. That felt so quick. 118, not a personal best but i do remember with my personal best i had like full crystal bow for Adin and everything so definitely not bad we just finished our first urban and we got 68 grimy toad flags to get these i spent 6,000 gp in seeds and we got back 260,000. so that's why this is so incredibly good for passive income Oh my god! Uh, you know what? Fair enough. If my death is going to be to anything, it's 40 hit. That's, yeah, that's a lot of damage. That's fair enough. I was expecting this soon. A Dragon Halberd drop. This is one of the best drops that you can get. It is not very rare, actually. 1 in 64, so on this grind, we should get around 8 of them. Oh, we got it. The first spirit seed. I was actually kind of waiting for this because I want to show you guys something you can do with these spirit seeds that actually makes them turn into money. Because otherwise you would only use this for farming experience and the spirit trees. So if you go to the farming guild, you can hand it in to guild master Jane for seed packs. So that is now one handed in. Let's uh, take all of them. And that's quite a lot of seeds, let's see the value. Yeah, okay, probably not the most valuable seeds I got, but 20k is 20k, I'll take it. 
And of course, just like Borcat, we will be getting elite clue scrolls on this grind. They are 1 in 75, so actually slightly more rare than Borcat. So not as many on this grind as the last one, but still a decent amount. Oh, we got a combat achievement, Snake Rebound for 4 points. I actually don't even know what that is. Let me check. Kill Solra by using the Vengeance spell as the finishing blow. All right, so I accidentally got a nice combat achievement. I actually only have two Solra achievements left to do. The Speedrunner one, which is very unlikely I'll get a 50. 4 second kill with my current gear, but the perfect Solra might be doable. Basically take no damage from anything during the fight, so I will have to kill the snakelings manually with my blowpipe. Oh, we got something! Tanzanite Fang! Actually, one of the better items you can get, I think, out of all the uniques. 2.75 million, I'll take it. I was actually going to show you guys the loot for 100kc, but we're on 98 now, and we got the fangs, so I might as well show it. We are making decent money, it is just slightly less than Warcath, but uh, now with the Tanzanite Fang, we made up for a bit of it. I have been diligently doing my herb runs every single cycle that I can, and it is, of course, draining some time from my Solra grind, but it's definitely worth it. We're 100 and three toast like seeds already down and we are hitting the first farming level 76 farming and the xp that you get you can see i'm getting like 39 xp drops is not much so it's maybe going to be the only farming level we get I have had the most insane Solra run right now. I haven't taken any damage from anything. So I actually do think we are getting the perfect Solra right here. Let's see if we are please Show me that achievement. Yes, we got it. Perfect Solra. Actually, this was way harder than I thought. So that took me like over 50, 60 attempts to get this. I took damage from the minions so many times, but finally we got it. I knew this was going to happen. We finally got a quest requirement for an elite clue scroller. This one I need to go to the island of Stone for, which is located all the way up north here. And you need to have started and almost completed Fremenic Exiles for this. But luckily I have every single requirement for this quest already already done so all we need to do is just complete the quest and it has some good benefits in the future for us anyways besides the nice experience drops that you get for completing the fremenic exiles the main draw and benefit of this quest is the basilisk jaw which creates the natus knot face guard an upgraded version of the natus knot helmet the basilisk jaw itself is dropped from basilisk knights at a drop rate of one in five thousand and is worth 22 million but can be reduced to one in one thousand if you're on a slayer task so for completing this quest i both get access to a very good strength bonus helmet and the benefit to get basilisk knights as a slayer task which could give me a massively valuable drop we have arrived at the final boss the jormunger uh, yeah uh, the snake guy which is actually not a very difficult boss. All you have to do is deal with two mechanics. One where the screen turns red, where you have to look away from the boss for a couple of seconds. And the second mechanic is that you get turned into stone and all you have to do is click all over the screen to break out of it. And there it is. And that is the final boss completed on the Fremenic Exiles, which also means the quest is completed. And there we have the XP drops. 30k runecrafting, 50k slayer and 50,000 crafting and also the V-Shield. And after that, Elite completed. We are coming up on the halfway point of Solra, 250kc after this one, for some pure essence and some Solra scales, but this is all the loot that we've got so far, and we have only seen one single unique, the Tanzanite Fang, and if we go to the collection log, this is what it looks like, of course I would love to get the mutagens and the jar, and I guess the onyx as well just for the collection logs, even though they have no value. Oh my goodness gracious, another Tanzanite Fang. This is the only unique we're gonna get, I guess. That was 91 kills since the halfway point, so it's definitely been a while. And I mean, I'll take some other uniques next time, maybe. I, I, it's, I'm not complaining, though. It's good value. Another Tanzanite Fang, only 30, what is that, 38 KC later, so very close to the last one. I guess this is the only unique we can get. As we are getting very close to the end of the Solra grind, I want to give a bit of an update on the herb stack of 1,476 Grimy Toad Flags, worth 5.5 million, so definitely some nice extra cash to get. We are currently on 420 Solra kills, we need 80 more before we can finish the grind, but today I'm very busy in real life, so I actually can't do any Solra kills but instead we're going to be doing herb runs every single cycle that I can and I'm going to be doing it mostly on my phone so let's see how many herbs we can get in one full day of only doing herb runs 
It is now 11 o'clock at night and I have to go to bed soon and I've been keeping up as much as I possibly could with these Urbrands and you can see in my inventory I have them all noted. Let's see how much we made. Nearly 2 million GP from just passively doing Urbrands one single day. Logging in every time they were ready. That is some really nice passive income. I'm probably going to keep this up for the entire series. And this is it. This is the final Solra kill of the entire grind. Are we going to get anything good? Battle staves, grapes, and Solra scales. A pretty decent drop though anyways. This is like 100k for the last one. And this is all the loot. A bit less than a Vorkath, but not too much less. Like 10% less or something like that. So can't really complain. And when it comes to combat achievements, I unfortunately never got the Solra speedrunner. But 54 seconds with my current gear setup is kind of unrealistic. So I'm fine with that. Before we actually have a look at how much my bank is currently valued after doing Solra, we have 7 elites to open, so let's just start opening these and see if we can get any masters or any mimics for that matter. And we get a Samurai page 1, new collection log slot, 3 more to go, 2 more, no master yet, and the last one, a very lackluster opening I have to say. So this is pretty much my Solra loot tab, and I did have to use some of the items that I got, like the Solra teleports, as supplies, and also some of the runes, and all the good stuff to recharge my trident. So the supplies were definitely a bit costly here. Also, I did make 8.15 million from herbs, which is going to be counted in for the final overall bank value, which is not gained from Solra. Let's have a look. We went from 350 million to 388 million. And as I said, 8 million of that is from herbs. So we actually from Solra only made 30 million profit. With my stats and the gear I was using, I was getting roughly the same kill times on both Vorkath and Solra. So 500 KC on either took the same amount of time. But after deducting the cost of supplies, Vorkath gave me roughly 50 million net profits and Solra only 30 million. So Vorkath is definitely the winner of this episode and I might go back there in the future to grind out some more consistent money. Also, as I alluded to earlier, I do want to keep doing herb runs for at least the foreseeable future. So I actually haven't sold my grimy toad flags yet, as I want to see how far I can actually stack this up over the course of the next episodes. But now with a cash stack of nearly 200 million and a bank worth almost double that, I cannot wait to get into the next grind, as we're going to be making probably a lot of money next episode.